welcome to In Case You Get Hit by a Bus, the podcast. Uh, Abby, here's a question. Is there someone in your life that you trust implicitly to perhaps clean up any things that you left behind that you might not want other people to know about? We've referred to this in the book as a cleaner, someone who could go through and like emails, texts, old letters, things like that. Is there anyone in your life that you know that you trust that would do this and also not advertise it to the world? That's a, it's a really good question. I don't have any, I haven't designated a, I haven't designated a, a cleaner. <laughs> Okay, um, I'll do it. But but I see but I but I'm now seeing my opportunity to ask you <laughs> if Jean, will you be my cleaner? I would, but you're gonna outlive me by like five hundred years. So <laughs> I, I don't I will, think so. My you know what, my avatar by then I will have a live a robot me that will come and clean everything. But is there someone my mom? Is, well, I was gonna just say you just made me think. So about a week ago, my mom was cleaning her house, mm -hmm. and she found this. She sent a text to, um, to me and to my sister saying, with a picture of like fifty love notes, and she said, for, mm -hmm. love notes from from boyfriends when she. I mean, she and my parents, she and my dad have been married for 50 years, but she had apparently all of these love <laughs> notes from ex boyfriends, and she wow. was like, "Wow, I guess I really did have." more boyfriends than I thought people really did love me. And she was like, I, uh, just so you know, I'm throwing all of these out now, finally going through the boyfriend love letters. And we were like, no, don't throw those out, mom. We want to see them. And so she started, um, you know, taking pictures of each one at a time being like, Oh, Phil, he was such a nice man or, you know, whatever. Were but they written the on parchment from like, they with like an ink and quill. Like I think of them being very romantic and like classic. First of all, they, they, I don't think they were written on parchment, but they were written in script. <laughs> okay. What, that's <laughs> what person do you know today is writing their girlfriend love letters with, you know, pen <laughs> on script. I mean, oh, that would be wow. kind of nice. That is a note to Ben start writing but, more script notes. So it made me think, well, first of all, I didn't want her to throw hers out because mm -hmm. I don't know. It's kind of a way of getting to know about her mm -hmm. life. If, um, I, I want to read them or, or digitize them or something. So we yeah. don't lose that because that's like a whole part of her life that frankly, we've never really talked about except for one. I do know about one boyfriend story, which I can tell you later, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like Angela, make a note for a second podcast. It's going to be more bridges of Madison County. We're one, of have... my mom's, one of my mom's best friends dated Elvis Presley. Holy crap. I, you know, I'm yeah. an Elvis fanatic. I've been to really? Graceland. I've been to Graceland. I don't go anywhere, but I've been to Graceland and I love all of Elvis stuff. I, I could tell you pretty much. I read his biographies, multiple ones of those, listen to him often, obsessed. So wait, that's crazy. Someone that dated Elvis. like a big secret. And so I don't know why it's a big secret. And, and, and I hope it's not, I don't know. Is this Sybil Shepherd? Is it Sybil Shepherd? <laughs> is your friend Sybil Shepherd? Is your friend Priscilla Presley? I can't discuss this on live TV, but yes. um, <laughs> uh, in any case, there's all of these secrets. And my mom had, has these love letters and these stories about boyfriends growing up. And she, I don't know why she wanted to just throw, throw it out, but it made me think about what are the things that I have. And I do have a stack of, Ben's not listening to this, is he? Yeah. I have a stack of love letters that are from, and I, I had, I guess I had a lot of boyfriends growing up and they, mm -hmm. and, and, and mixtapes and love letters <laughs> and all of these things. And I have a box of them, but it made me think that what do I do with that box? Because if something were to happen to me and then Ben were to go through them and see that I still have them, he might be like, oh my gosh, does she still, did she, why is she keeping these letters? Does she have feelings for these people or whatever? You know that and, ben, ben seems like the type that would be like, yeah, whatever. like, I don't think, I don't think he'd feel threatened, but like, if someone feels threatened by that, by your past, it's like saying, well, yeah, I had this life. And sometimes you want to remember because a lot of times how many things have we forgotten in the past 10 years of our lives, let alone something that happened in high school or junior high and you misremember things. And this becomes a way like in the future, everything's going to be text message. So you can, you can be able to search someone's text message and know, Oh, this is what they sent to me. This is how they talked to me. This is what I was feeling at that time. And 
is it wrong to like say, okay, you delete all old text messages from somebody or old emails? Because maybe you want to go back and remember, huh, that relationship turned bad. That relationship was good at one point. What happened? How could we go through that? So in a way you could like forensically identify where things may have happened. So having those letters, like maybe, you know, 20, 30 years from now, you're going to read them and find it funny. And remember for me, when I cleaned out my parents' house, I found, I kept a ton, like, cause I, but I also had a lot of writing. So it was like mixed in with all these old notebooks about, you know, stories that, you know, one day someone will find and publish and realize how horrible of a writer I was as a child. And I found no. one that, that I literally could cancel someone's life for what this person sent to me. I won't even say if it's who it is, the name is signed on it. And it was a note passed to me that had a really bad slur on it. And they said, I didn't call you, uh, I'm not going to say the word, but it's an F word and it's something that you do not use. And it was weird because that was the 80s. And I was like, why would someone fork. give, yes, fork. I can't believe they called me a fork. Uh, I can't say the word. You can't say the word. It's one of those words that, you know, you're not going to say. I don't even want to know what the word is. Do you yeah, it's, 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 it's. it's it's a slur. I mean, it's funny because you're a lot like my mom now where you, everyone else would have figured out what the word is by now. You're like, what could it be? Did they call you a finger? It's like, mom, how didn't you know this? But the thing was, I found this note and it was kind of surprising because I actually had seen this person post really decent person on Facebook. And I'm like, <laughs> if I were to post this note, it would literally probably ruin their life. And I don't know why it was given to me. I don't remember ever getting it, but it kind of made me think of how times have changed and like, why would I save that? And it was, and for me, I have a sick sense of humor. So I found it kind of funny. Like for me, if it was among friends, I'd be like, look at what I got and they'd find it funny. But if I were to post it wide, it would be extremely offensive. Right. But that's like well, part of a history that- That's I, part I, of the history, but you have to leave behind if you're gonna if you're gonna keep a note like that or if I'm gonna keep, right? The, oh, no, the, I want no context. I want my nephew <laughs> or niece to find it and be like, what was Gene up to in high school that made people send him notes like this? I got rid of every other note but that. I'm gonna get it framed. It's gonna be right there on the wall soon. Uh, but but that, people that's people who have, simple. people might have um, medications that they take yeah. that they don't want to get um, you know, other people to know about, or they might have things in their drawer that are, that are secretive well, to them, or that might be, or that might be misconstrued as being something that they're not. Yeah. Um, Let's start digital. I want to start digital. Like how, how is your laptop, desktop, phone, tablet? Like, would you say it's, it's pretty much free for anyone to use? Or would you be like, oh, wow, that's got a lot of dicey stuff on it. Well, I don't allow anybody to use my devices except for my little kids if they're if they're playing like a video yeah. game while I'm watching them. But um, because my uh, I, I don't allow anybody to use my devices, yeah. but not because not because I'm hiding anything on them, but because I. But if someone found them, that you're not you're not like worried. Like, I guarantee people listening are like, oh god, if someone saw my phone, I'd freak out. And the same with like internet browsers. Uh, if they don't know what private browsing is by this point, then you really need to like get with it. If you're looking up anything, I mean, most Google searches I do that are completely innocent, I'll do in private browsing because I just don't want to get slammed by different ads and other things. Uh, but I'd say browser, you're probably safe. You don't have to worry about browser history type things. No, I, I have nothing. I don't really have anything to hide. I think the only thing I might be hiding at a particular time would be if I'm shopping for a present for somebody's birthday or something and I, or Mother's Day, I don't want to, you know, I don't want them to use my phone and see, or if one of my kids, if I've ordered something, I mean, the biggest thing is if I've ordered something on Amazon and if they were to go into my Amazon account and they would see what's coming or if they talk to Alexa to try to find out what yeah. they're getting for their birthday or something. But no, I have nothing, I don't really have anything to hide. I that mean, Alexa is a snitch. We have to talk about that because that, 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 that's something that like can totally give up. Like your surprise gift is almost there. I could just see it ruining every surprise. So you have totally. to make sure that that's turned off. I mean, but, I'm not a good, I'm not a good, I'm not really good at use case because I don't really have anything. To, you're too innocent. I don't have anything to hide in my home or that I've hidden on, you know, that are, that's hidden in my computer or that I would be embarrassed for people to find. I, but I, I, I think that I'm just really boring. And I think that, that I know plenty of people mm -hmm. who do not, not that they're hiding anything s 
like crazy or secretive, but things could get misconstrued or they, you know, I don't know, might have. Yeah. Actually, I do have something. Of I course you do. I, I, I would totally, you give me like 20 minutes in your stuff. I will find something. Well, I let could... me just, I'll just say this. I have something from my college years mm -hmm. that I've been saving as a reminder of, I don't even want to talk about it. Okay. So we have the reminder. I need a cleaner. I need Gene. We'll discuss yes. this after the call. But do you think like external hard drive? Because for me, I mean, I have so many backups and things that I guarantee there's stuff people would find on there that they'd be like, this is disgusting. Or why'd you keep this? Or why'd like you what? find this funny? What? What? Like, Let's I mean, discuss. you know, where I work, like, it'll be like a funny video. Like, that's really like gross uh, of someone like getting, you know, now you'd go on Reddit or find those. But back then you couldn't do that. So you're like, why would they have this video of this accident or this person doing that or this person like, you know, singing this really horrible song? Because at the time it was funny and there was no way to keep it anywhere else. Now you just, why would you have that like locally? You'd have it on a site that you log into or don't log into or just search for. Uh, but you're now, saying out of context content. Oh, mo most of that, that. And I mean, if you go through it, there's going to be stuff that's probably found that could be old, again, emails, texts, letters that you send, because maybe parting with it is a difficult thing too. Because a lot of times it's not about being, like we know Adam who will be, you know, he is, he keeps everything. Like Adam, co-founder with you, he loves to keep everything because I think it's like a part of him. And some people are really easy at like just getting rid of whatever. They can clean I up keep anything. Everything. I keep everything too. I kind of, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a, I, I'm not a hoarder, but I no. like to keep things because they remind me. I keep birthday cards. I keep the birthday cards from the kids. I keep, um, yeah. after my brother died, uh, all of the, um, all of the people who wrote sympathy notes, I saved yeah. every single sympathy note. I just, and, and I don't really have a good system yet for it's my, it's one of the next things on my list is to go through all of that. Mm -hmm. But we, um, but I like to be really organized and I like to keep, I like to keep things, but I like to keep them in an organized way. Yeah. And I like, I, I understand because I think nostalgia, especially as you get older, plays such a huge part where you like to look back. Something that a song that I hated in the eighties or nineties is now something I'm like, Oh wow, that song, it comes back on where I remember if it would come on MTV or the radio, I would turn it off as fast as possible. And I think that's the same way with memories because as you, yeah. now that they're easy to recall, and a lot of times when I look at email, but also cloud-based storage, and this is where, if you remember that whole scandal where they said emails were hacked for celebrities and all these, these private photos and videos were put online, and it wasn't so much that they were hacked, it's people figured out the passwords for those sites. And also people didn't delete their recently deleted files. So if you put something in a trash can, it doesn't mean it's gone. You could put everything in a trash can. So people deleted a photo thinking it was gone. A lot of people went to that folder, looked, saw the ones that hadn't been deleted permanently yet, and then shared those. So oh, I just thought of something. You just made me think of something. So people, not that this, these there's anything to hide, but if you've had conversations, for mm -hmm. example, on text message about things that are private or with conversations that you're having that you've had, you know, in the past, even like a year yeah. ago that iCloud is storing, those are the types of things that I guess I might want to think about just being cognizant of yeah. or taking a look at if there if I know of, you know, any any private issues that I've discuss with best yeah. friends or things that they wouldn't, maybe they were discussing with me, but yeah. they wouldn't want to get out in the open. It's a good idea then, I guess, for me to go in and search for those things and just delete them because there's probably no reason, I'm, there's no reason to keep them unless there yeah. is, in which case I'll keep it. But private conversations that you've had, whether an email or text message should be deleted. It's just so many that it gets overwhelming because even as I've gone back and thought, okay, you know, I'm just going to get rid of this thread. Then I realized, wait, that backed up to a computer that I used to be signed into, or that's somewhere else. Yeah. That's the problem. My backups are, they, they become, backups can become liabilities because you think you got rid of everything, but then it's still there. And I'm not talking about, I know if someone deletes something from a computer, yeah. it could still be recovered. It does, you know, if someone needs to get it, people might not go to those lengths. And that's why when we talk about a cleaner, it's someone who will go on, delete this stuff respectfully and not make it everyone else's business. That is the important part. It's not saying, look, I found this stuff on a computer and now I'm going to show it to the whole family or I'm going to tell this person. It's saying, assume when I disappear, 
that stuff disappears with me. Like I'm taking those secrets with me and you have to make sure you're not naming a busybody who's going to go out and start saying, do you know what they said about you? Or use it almost as like this weird blackmail ammunition or to try to get people on their side. So I think that having that respect is very important. But if you don't have someone you trust like that, or you're worried it will be out of context, because a lot of times it might not be racy stuff. We're talking, someone might not have a trove of weird, like adult videos they made. It could be you talking about a friend in a certain way that at a certain moment, that if that person heard it, they might be hurt. Like, I, I don't begrudge people talking behind other people's back. That's what you do. You know, you talk about people. And it doesn't right. mean you're being negative. You, you could say this person, I remember friends of mine that were going through major problems and we're like, we should get this person's help. He's a, he's a mess. And maybe if they saw that, they'd think, okay, I don't remember that. Uh, did they care about me? Is it something that seems negative? You want to make sure that it but doesn't this is something out. that's probably really interesting to think about from the standpoint of talking to parents about it. Yeah. I bet parent, I mean, we might be thinking about what, what do, do we need to en enlist somebody to help us clean up our email or text yeah. messages or iCloud accounts. But I guarantee my parents are not thinking about this. So um, lucky. Their friends are not yes. thinking about this. Right. And they, but they probably have things in their worlds that they wouldn't want to you know, be seen by other people or friends. So it's not, it's not like a huge, <laughs> but we also deal, don't know but it's a deal. No one knows the secret person because when, when we had a story on the site about, uh, I, I've posted like this Reddit had a, a thread about the saddest things found on like deceased people's computers. And I had to weed through, there was hundreds and hundreds of things and 95% of them was born. That's it. It's like, we found this, but the ones that were interesting that we used, but the thing that was weird was all these people are like, who knew my grandpa was up to this? Because, you know, for a lot of people, they grew up where it was magazines and DVDs or VHS or whatever they used. And then all of a sudden it became digital. And it's kind of like a kid growing up now. It's, you know, they, they think it would be funny if someone had like a stack of magazines somewhere. And let's be honest. If you found a stack of magazines from your grandpa, it would be kind of quaint and cute. You'd find it funny. You'd be like, oh, look, all these, all, unless they're really like freaky magazines i'm talking you know like you found like a playboy or something then that's fine but the idea of having access to it or assuming that just because someone's older doesn't have a really horrible browser history or stuff on their computer it you know i think it, it I think we'd be surprised people, i mean this is all nice you're just so innocent that's the problem you have to <laughs> no i just think that i think that people kind of also have this mindset and, uh, you know, who knows, but of, uh, if I, if, if I die, it doesn't really matter. Like yeah. I don't really care anymore. Yes. It's not my problem. Um, but I guess <laughs> there might be other people impacted yeah. and, or other family members implicated or involved or, yeah. or that, business contacts. It's or, not, a, it's not about exactly. Right. It's, that and has so nothing to do with you. About, like, what kind of crap am I yeah. leaving behind it, or what, you know, what disaster yeah. am I leaving in my wake? Um, and no pun intended. Yeah, it's um, kind of like saying if you set a bomb to go off and then you die, you're like, okay, well, it's not going to affect you anymore, but it's going to affect right. everyone else who's still alive who's going to get affected by that. So it's like people do suffer, you know, from the sins of the parents or people that are close to them or a spouse. If all of a sudden they died and it got out that all this, stuff, it, it does look bad because you can't blame when the person's gone, they're done. It's everyone else who's surrounding them. I mean, again, when you have a funeral, the funeral's for the living to remember. The funeral isn't, you know, that that's why you have them. And this, if you're going through like your stuff and yeah. okay, we got through digital, we know it's like, just keep your browser clean, use private browsing and clean up once in a while and accept that maybe some stuff will slip through. And maybe you want to tell someone when you're going through my computer, don't snoop. And if you find stuff, don't share. But when it comes to physical stuff, and this is what made me laugh when I was on a meeting with Angela and we were going over our skeletons checklist when I said probably the only place we mentioned toys besides pet features, it was in this. Oh, right. And I think I vetoed it going in, into the book. Physical media. Toy, well, we, yeah, we, we, we didn't have the toys in there. I think I was like, I yes. can't have this be in our book. And we said not of the Lego or action figure variety. But I think for that, Again, we said it's, it's, you could find something novelty. People have novelty things, or you say it's novelty uh, if anyone finds it. But if you go through that stuff, again, 
use discretion if you find stuff like that. When I've talked to uh, cleaning specialists who clean up hoarders' houses, the stuff you don't see on the show is the stuff they find that is really out of bounds. If you find it, throw it in a garbage bag and get rid of it. Do not make a deal of it. Like, don't shame mm -hmm. someone post that way. I don't know, Gene. If I if 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 I end up finding all these funny things in my parents' drawers, I'm gonna tell it. <laughs> <laughs> well, your parents. I think it's interesting if it's your parents. But if you found, we talked about like you know, obviously, like if there's racy garments. So if you found like racy garments, I, I love how I put it that way. It was all of a sudden I went back to the 30s. Oh, she's wearing a racy garment. <laughs> I haven't, I don't even, yeah. I mean, that would be amazing. Okay. Yeah. So, Racy yeah. garments, uh, then private journals or diaries. Again, I think in the context, it's not so much the, the, the adult stuff. It's the personal stuff that could hurt. Like if you were, if you were a kid and you found your parents diary and they said, I regret having these kids, they're driving me crazy. I want to run away. You might start reconsidering how your whole childhood was and it could drop a bomb. Now, if you want them to know this, that's fine. But maybe at that moment, you're going through some hard stuff, you know? Right. And well, that also brings up this whole other issue of maybe there are secrets that you have been keeping, but you had, had meant to tell at some point and yeah. you haven't yet. You, what, you know, people also need to think about disclosing things that they may want to get out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we see that often in, in shows where someone like, is there, they, they go through and they're like, I don't want to die with this. I, I think that most people do die with the secrets and they come out, but the problem is they're not told properly or they're misconstrued or they're uh, embellished or changed. So if you want to get it from the source, you either get it from the source or you accept that any other story you're getting is probably tilted towards the person telling it to you. Uh, that's why, you know, there's, there, there's, Fiction and nonfiction. There's not like fiction and truth because nonfiction still is a shade of fiction. It's just the best story you can get. It's that person's reliability. It's the person, what do they have to gain by telling the truth? And could they misremember it? Because there's right. things, all of us, I used to do this trick with people where I'd ask them a movie scene from their kid, their childhood that scared them. And then I'd have them watch it again, and they'd be like, how did that scare me? God, I've been fearing it my whole life, this one movie scene of horror. And now that I've watched it, what was And I'm like, because your mind created a whole different world around that scenario. So you do want to get it out there. And maybe, you know, people talk about bucket lists. Maybe it's like, these are things I kind of want to speak about and let someone know, or make sure they never know. Because otherwise, that that ambiguity could really create problems yeah. in the future. And and we also talked about like personal history things. If uh, people had you know a criminal record or something that they didn't want someone to know about, which again, it could be something minor, could be something. Gene, that, like, do you want to talk about something? I have none. I'm I'm clean right now. No criminal record for me. Uh, <clears throat> divorce decrees. I do have one of those. Uh, illegitimate children. No. Um, Not that you know of. Yeah, and if if someone was a part of groups that they might need to explain, because let's face it, if you were going through a person's house and you found a lot of like hate memorabilia or things like that from groups, you will have some questions and you'll know, okay, if someone fought in World War II and they had just say some emblem that they took as a prize off the battlefield for killing Nazis, you're like, I get it, grandpa did that. But if there was a whole secret room with like actual like hate stuff, well, you, I think if you're somebody who has a secret room, then it's bound to be found. We, we, it will be found and it will be completely. And please tell us how to build one because they're pretty awesome. Uh, I think they're more complicated than people think. But also, if and, and finally, if people have anything that's dangerous, we talk about pills. We talk about getting rid of things, medications that you might drugs, take. Right. Weapons. Any drugs, weapons, especially right. because... And weapons are valuable. How will you feel about it? If they're legal, if they're registered, if there's something yeah. you purchased, it could be tens of thousands of dollars. Machetes. Someone... Machetes, no, they're very cheap. I get them wholesale. I have I tons mean, of machetes. And I have you... a lot of machetes. <laughs> that, that's your secret. You just have, you're a machete collector. That's your, that's your I have secret. I have a room filled with machetes. Is what that you... weird? But you cook that so weird. much, so I would not be surprised if you cooking had cooking machetes. Yes, you have cooking. more. You, cooking. you have more than I have. Better.